Good day, good day everyone and once again your favorite uncle is back and today we are going to be looking at uh, exponents and we're looking at the laws uh, that govern uh, the exponential functions. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please just do the right thing. Just hit that subscribe button. Hey, and tell as many people as possible that, hey, your uncle is doing the most when it comes to maths and science content. So uh, I'd like for us to just jump in and make sure that we get or grasp the laws on exponents. All right. So I'm going to start with the rules uh, that govern expo uh, exponents. And in this case, let me first of all start with just understanding, a general understanding. So what is an exponent, right? So we have what we call. So in this case, if I say to you, let's say uh, um, R is equal to, let's say, A to the power N, okay, or exponent N, right? Now, we call this the base of the exponent, right? So this is base. And this one we call the exponent. So we raise it by an exponent, right? But the entire thing in here is actually called a power. So R in actual fact is a power, right? So in this case, um, what we're saying is that you've got the base, you've got the exponent, which we raise the base by, uh, but the entire thing is a power. And I know that sometimes we get to mix up, you know, uh, the terminology. However, we need to get it right mathematically uh, so that we can always, always uh, have the proper mathematical talk, right? But in this case, um, what I would like us to do is just to, uh, in practice, what does this look like, okay? So, we're going to go through the laws of exponents and just have a little bit of practice at the end. Right, let's talk about the uh, first law of exponents, right? So law number one simply says, if I have a base, okay, if I'm multiplying, um, if the bases are the same, right? So let's say a to the power m multiplied by a raised to the exponent n, right? So if the bases are the same and I am multiplying the powers, right? So in this case, what happens? We add the exponents, right? So this will be m plus n, right? So let's take an example. So if I say to you, we've got 3 raised to the exponent x multiplied by a 3 raised to the exponent, let's say, uh, 2, okay? So in this case, what will happen? The bases are the same, right? So what do we do? We're going to add the exponents in this case. So we're going to say, well, this is equal to 3 raised to the exponent x plus 2, okay? So please be careful. You do, you do not multiply the exponents but you add them right so if the bases are the same and we are multiplying then we are going to add the exponents okay right now let's go to the next rule the second rule of exponents right so in this case if the bases are the same once again i'm taking bases that are the same and in this case i am dividing okay I am dividing. So what happens in that case? We say, well, we subtract, or in this case, the other exponent changes sign, right? So this is going to equal a raised to m. Now n changes sign in this case. That's a minus n. Okay, right. Once again, let's do this. Okay, so if I take for, for argument's sake, we've got two raised to the exponent, um, uh, let's say, x, okay? And I divide it by uh, another base 2, raised to the exponent 3 minus x, okay? So what am I going to do? Please, I want you to listen carefully, right? So this will be 2 
right now remember i'm going to take the other exponent right so taking this one first x minus so i'm going to change the sign now remember this whole thing changes sign right so that would be minus 3 minus x okay so we're applying that rule so what will happen in this case that will be 2 x now when i'm multiplying the negative inside here that would be minus 3 and plus x right so what would that give us that would give us 2 now x plus x will be 2x minus 3 i hope that makes sense ladies and gents so if i am raising right uh, or rather if i am dividing uh, my powers in this case so what happens the exponents uh, uh, I subtract the exponents and in this case um, yeah they kind of change sign right right let's go to the third law of exponents right so law number three right again if I have two different bases all right so let's say a multiplied by b right and I am raising them by an exponent okay so what happens it means that that exponent will raise both bases so this will be a raised to the exponent m and b raised to the exponent m as well right so in this case uh, once again so if i have for argument's sake we're going to have three times two okay right and I raise them to the exponent 2. So this will be 3 squared multiplied by 2 squared. Okay, right. Please keep that in mind. And the same can be uh, applied for division, right? So in this case, um, if I take, okay, so that's rule number 4, right? So if I'm going to take um, 2 basis right so again i'm going to have a divided by b and i raise them to the exponent m please note so what does this become it it becomes a raised to the exponent m divided by b raised to the exponent m as well right so in this case it's almost the same as the third law but in this case obviously it involves division right now, let's take um, the last one and I'm going to just add in just a couple of other things as well. So if we have, right, so if I raise a base with an exponent, okay, and raised by another exponent. Now, note it's not the same as when I take two bases and I multiply them. Here, I'm raising a power with another exponent right so what happens it means that we will multiply in this case so this will equal a multiplied by um, n multiplied a raised rather to the n multiplied by m right so once again if i have got x squared right so i raised x squared by let's say four so what happens so this will become x raised to 2 multiplied by 4 and that will be uh sorry uh, x okay so here i'm making a little bit of a mess here um right so that will be x to the uh, i mean raised to the exponent 8 okay right now uh, very important so what we're going to do is that we're going to take this a little bit slowly and um, just to make sure that we, you know, we, we, we get to practice these laws, right? Um, but there are a couple of things that I just want to mention, okay? Well, you can say they are part of the laws, but in this case, um, I'll just, uh, um, you know, add them as just clauses, right? And uh, things that we just need to remember. We need to remember in this case, right? So, um, that if I raise any base by zero, okay, so 
that's not a law necessarily but if i raise any base by zero it's always going to be equal to one so it doesn't matter what the base is as long as it's a obviously a, re a real number so in this case um, anything raised uh, to the exponent zero will always give us one okay right so this is going to be clause number two right so remember okay so um, if I take let's say a uh, let's say minus m okay raised to the minus m remember that I can always represent this okay as 1 over a to the positive m so remember you, you remember in the second law right we said in this case when you take the exponent so you can look at it as taking the exponent to the top what happens it changes sign right so if you think about it so what are we doing here so we had an exponent that was negative so what we can actually do is we can represent it as an inverse right but in this case the exponent is now going to be positive that would be helpful because in as much as we can apply this uh, forward right remember we can also reverse it as well so if i've got let's say for argument's sake i've got one over two to the minus x right i can represent this now as um sorry i wanted to say two to the positive x rather um so this can be represented as two to the negative x and the opposite is also true it will depend on what we are trying to apply it for right all right now um let's take the next one uh, so for number three right um so that's another clause uh, of ours so remember we've explored so meaning uh, also right if i've got um let's say y to the negative one this can be represented as one over y okay right as i said you can also reverse uh, the process as well right now meaning also that um that's what i wanted to show you in the previous one that if i were to take y over one over let's say y to the negative n right now think about it uh, in this case when it goes to the top it changes sign can you see when i take this and i take it to the top it changes sign so in this case um, this would be y to the positive n right so um just be uh, um yeah just be mindful of that and we are going to be uh, um, exploring it just a little bit more yeah i just want to make this uh, all the more better visible right so that is one y raised to the exponent n so those are the rules that we're going to apply right and i want us to take some examples on this okay and uh, see how we're going to apply the laws of exponents all right so let's look at the following examples and we're going to be applying our rules now right they say simplify the following expressions all right now uh, the first one we've got two raised to the exponent x minus y uh, multiplied by two raised to the exponent x plus y right you can see this is our multiplication uh, law this is law one right we said if bases are the same and we are multiplying we know that we're going to add the exponents so in this case we're going to have two right so this is going to be x minus y plus in this case so we are going to add the other exponents which is x plus y right so how do we simplify this this becomes two now we're going to add obviously a uh, like term so we've got x plus x remember in this case that will become 2x and we've got negative y plus y and of course those two will cancel out so it means that our final answer will be 2 uh, raised to the exponent 2x okay right let's go to the next one now the one thing that i want you to learn ladies and gents about exponents is that you always try to um, break numbers down 
into prime factors. We'll do that as we continue, right? So we've got 3 raised to the exponent x minus 2, and we are multiplying it by 9, right? Um, if you think about it, how can we raise 9 into a prime factor? Now, remember, what are prime numbers? Okay, those are numbers that are only divisible by themselves and 1, right? So, for instance, if you take 1, 2, uh, if you take 3 and 5, um, all of those are prime numbers, right? Um, 7 is a prime number. 9 is not a prime number, right? Uh, so, we always try to break uh, numbers down into, uh, you know, prime factors in this case. So, what I'm going to do is, there's nothing I can do with this 3x minus 2, but how can I express 9 as a prime factor, as a base of a prime factor? So remember, 9 would be 3 squared, right? So now, bases are the same. Can I add the exponents? Absolutely. So law 1 says, okay, if bases are the same, we can add the exponents. So this will be x minus 2 plus 2. And um, ultimately, what would be our final answer? Minus 2 plus 2 will cancel. It gives us 0. So we've got 3 raised to the exponent x. That's our final answer. That's the simplest form that we can express it in. All right. So here I can already see I'm going to um, apply law number 2, right? Remember the one of uh, division said, OK, so we've got two things here. 3 raised to the exponent 2n plus 1. Uh, divided by 3 raised to 2n minus 1. So what are we going to do? Going to say, well, if bases are the same, right, and we are dividing, right, so what do we do? We subtract in that case. So this will be 2n plus 1, right, minus. Now, please note, I'm going to put this in, in, in a bracket because it's that whole thing that we are now subtracting, right? So that's minus 2n minus 1, right? So let's simplify that. So that's going to be 3 raised to the 2n plus 1, right? Remember, in this case, it changes sign when we're multiplying by a negative. So that's minus 2n. Negative times a negative will give us a positive. So that's plus 1. So everything changes sign, right? So... Uh, 2n and minus 2n uh, obviously will cancel out. So we have 3. Uh, 1 plus 1 in this case gives us 2. So our final answer is 3 squared. You can, obviously, 3 squared is equal to 9. You can write this as just 9. Okay. Right. So go on to the next one. Okay. So we've got 5 times x. Um, raised to the exponent 3 multiplied by y and we've got 2x squared y squared as well right so what are we going to do okay so in this case I've got those two numbers uh, the beauty about multiplication is that there I've got uh, those two bases or numbers right so I can just simply multiply those 5 times 2 gives me 10 okay now the bases are the same, so I'm going to take only bases are the same and add the exponents thereof. So this is going to be x raised to the 3, but I've got another one there. So I'm going to add 2 from that uh, x there. And then y, this one, remember, uh, there is a 1 there, right? Um, so remember that if we've, we, we don't have... A number there, remember, there is a 1. So that would be 1 plus 2, right? So in this case, what do we end up with? We've got 10. 3 plus 2 will give us 5x to the exponent 5, y raised to the exponent 3. Okay, right. Uh, I think we are getting uh, the gist of our laws um, in this case. So we've got uh, here... 5 multiplied by 3 raised to the exponent 3 uh, minus 2n and divided by 9 raised to the exponent negative n, right? So what are we going to do? So we can't do much. Please, ladies and gents, you cannot multiply this 5 and that 3. Please be careful of that mistake, right? Why is that? Uh, in this case, this is not just a 3. It's 3. It's, it's an entire 
power. This is one number like that. Okay, so you can't separate this index or this base rather uh, from uh, those exponents. So in that case, that's just one power. Okay, so please do not multiply under any circumstance in that particular case. In the previous one, we're able to multiply those two because uh, that five was a separate number on its own. And this is a separate uh, number on its own. It was not necessarily tied. It didn't have an exponent that it is raised by. Okay, right. So in this case, uh, we're going to say, well, we've got five multiplied by, this is going to be three uh, raised to three minus two N. But now what happens to the nine in this case? I can represent it. Okay, I said you break numbers down into prime factors. Uh, nine is three raised to the exponent two, right? But remember that is raised to the minus N. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this nine, nine is three squared, but it's raised to the exponent minus n. So in this case, we can apply, um, you know, our, uh, it, I think it was our fourth law, uh, was it? Right? Um, yes, yes, it was our, no, actually it's the fifth law, right? Where we know that if we raise an exponent or a power with another exponent, they are going to multiply. So we're going to have five multiplied by three um, raised to the power or exponent min uh, three minus two n divided by three raised to now remember those two will be multiplied together, so that will be minus two n. Okay. 2 times negative n will give me minus 2n, right? So now we can apply our uh, second law of exponents, right, of division. I've got bases that are the same there. So I've got 5 multiplied by 3 raised to the exponent 3 minus 2n. But when I take this to the top, remember, all I'm going to do is change sign, or you can say, minus a negative 2n, right? But in future, just for us to save time, when you take this exponent to the top, okay? Uh, in this case, all it does is that it changes sign, okay? Uh, so in this case, we're going to have five times three raised to the exponent three, okay? Minus 2n plus 2n, okay? So you can see those two can cancel out. So I've got five, multiplied by 3 raised to the exponent uh, 3, right? So uh, in this case, 3 raised to the exponent 3, okay, remember that's 27. So we've got 5 multiplied by 27. Uh, I'm not sure what to get uh, from that. Uh, what's half of 270? Um, that's going to be 135, I think. Uh, you can verify that. Okay, uh, so that's 5 multiplied by 27. Okay, yep, I am correct. So that will give us 135. Okay, ladies and gents, we will continue uh, on the next segment. Uh, otherwise, I want to leave this lesson here for now. And we're going to continue with exponents. We're going to take some more complex examples. And I promise you, by the time that we're done, you will be fluent on exponents. But of course, I don't want to leave you alone. Okay. Uh, I want you to try out the following examples for me. Okay. So uh, these are the examples that you're going to try. Okay. Uh, so please, um, I want you to take this one, 8 raised to the exponents n multiplied by 4 uh, x plus 1. Please tell me what you will find as your final answer. Uh, you can take another one. In fact, uh, let's give you one and let's give you number 2. So 9 2x multiplied by 27 uh, raised to the exponent x. Right.
please if you can give me those two as an, a final answer i mean give me the final answer on your comments and let me know how that goes otherwise from me for now see you guys next time please don't forget to subscribe and like and share and tell as many people that your favorite uncle is really doing the most otherwise i'll see you guys next time shop shop